change a couple of things. Ah, the being recorded uh, norm <laughs> of the world we live in now, right? Uh, so I know we talked about this title being like, you make your own fate and you make your own career. But really what this is about is I'm going to give you kind of the cliff notes version of how to get happy, get known, and ultimately get paid. <laughs> and how do those things actually link up to each other? Because it really is a bit of a three-step process. You can't just go straight into what you consider your dream gig. It's actually a part that you build up into. It requires a lot of introspection for you to really understand what you consider success and how to get there. And it really, it is all about you, but also some other people to help you along the way. So with that, I wanted to give you a little bit of, you know, kind of my story in how to get happy, right? How can anyone appreciate you when you don't appreciate you? So let's kind of start with this. I was 100% the study kid. I wore polos to school. Uh, <laughs> you know, it was very much the adult child situation. Uh, got, you know, straight A's and everything, put all that kind of time and effort into studies. I did other, other things as well um, and pursued other passions as well. But, you know, everything that people said would get you success in life was if you study hard, you work hard, you achieve, it's, it's all going to pay off. It's all going to be just, everything's going to be great. And so I went to university and you know, tried to keep this up to a certain degree. Did all right, did all right. One, one top of the class, but on one bottom either. So, um, but also I went to school with a bunch of other nerds. But then the real world time came up and oh honey, uh, <laughs> I graduated in a time that nobody wanted to graduate and I, <laughs> definitely did not have the success I was looking for because that job was a dumpster fire. <laughs> like I was a dumpster fire at that point. Um, it was, it took everything I had to really go to work every day. I mean, uh, people in my life uh, from back then can definitely tell you I like physically resented going to work. Um, and it just, everything turned out to be not what I was expecting. You know, I put in all this effort. I put in all this time. I, I did all the right things that everyone said to do. And yet still, I wasn't seeing success. And then, you know, I took a look around. Who were the people who were actually being successful? What were they doing differently? You know, that kind of that real tea situation. <laughs> What's the real tea in this? And it's not about necessarily knowing everything and putting in all the effort and getting all these, you know, kind of quote, attaboy awards. Um, because at the end of the day, I wasn't seeing the payout and I was still overworked and hated my job. So what did that mean? Well, I took some time and really built up a bit of personal happiness and satisfaction then kind of shared those experiences and the, those learnings with other people to kind of build a little bit of a reputation and then ultimately to get paid, get those dollar dollar bills, y'all. <laughs> like uh, you can use your reputation to a certain degree and your personal brand to really cash in. And I can tell you that my... My take home money has just keep, kept growing um, from I was, you know, my first job out of college, I was barely making rent. 
uh, which was not a very expensive place to um, comfortably living the lifestyle that I wanted with a fully remote job. And I have toddler, I've got a I'm third trimester right now with the next one. And that hasn't changed my trajectory because I haven't wanted it to. So how, how does this work? How did I get to this point? I wanna start off with a little bit of like personal care. Now I am not an expert in this, but guess what? There are a number of people who have wonderful talks about personal care and avoiding burnout and intentionality. I really, uh, a number of these I've actually seen in person and have truly touched me. Um, the last one being a podcast that uh, I just kind of regularly listened to a number of them and it really kind of touched on a lot of things, especially in the pandemic. So I do recommend that for personal care, you head here first. There's, this is its own topic. This is its own thing. I'm going to give you a little bit of cliff notes, like I kind of talked about earlier. So why, why do we care about getting happy? When we self-regulate well, we are better able to control the trajectory of our emotional lives and resulting actions based on our values and sense of purpose. So ultimately, what does that mean? When we actually self-regulate and we kind of take control over the situations that we can, we can actually achieve higher levels of emotional happiness that then in turn support the kind of results that we're actually looking for. And we can kind of play that balancing act. And to a certain degree, be less disappointed in ourselves. I think a lot of us can get into this thing of going, oh, I compare myself to people on the internet. Well, everyone has their like burdens and they may not actually be happy. Um, you have no way to tell, you, tell whether or not that's true. But if you see somebody who is just going crazy all the time, you know, it, it's just not sustainable. And that's why you need to learn to say no. This is really hard. This is something I struggle with, especially as someone who uh, might look at something and go, oh, I could do that, or I could figure that out, and I could do that. It's like, there's a lot of things you can learn. There's a lot of things you could figure out. But what do you really want? <laughs> what, what is going to have priority to you? What is going to mean more for your growth? You have to self-regulate by saying no to the things that are not necessarily going to give you that next bump in either your skills or perception or reputation. So in saying no, you need to love yourself enough to set boundaries. Your time and energy are precious. You get to choose how to use it. You teach people to treat you by decide how to treat you by deciding what you will and won't accept. I don't know what more to ask to add to that, but it's, it's true. What you allow people to do ultimately decides your personal boundaries of what you're willing to do. If you're constantly willing to work overtime, they're just going to expect that. It isn't going to be, you know, considered an extra thing that you did or, you know, something special. It's going to be considered literally part of you and your job. So if that's not something you want, you ultimately have to tell people no and start or start a path that's going to regulate you into a, a situation that you want to. All right. Who does this? Raise of hands to yourself. I don't see anybody here, but who else judges themselves constantly, especially to random people on the internet? This is something I think a lot of us struggle with, but you have to learn to not judge yourself. 
You need to be kind to yourself. Remember that when you abuse yourself, you will experience the anger, the regret and apathy of the bully, as well as the depression, anxiety and insecurity of the victim. This is a Kobayashi Maru or the unwinnable situation. Every time that you judge yourself, especially harshly, you are doing nothing but damage to yourself. You are both sides in a situation. So ultimately, if you don't achieve something that you set a goal on to, instead of saying, oh, so disappointed in me, why not say, you know what? I tried. And these are the things I learned. And this is how I can ultimately get there. Stress actually does kill you. Um, some people are just like going, oh, well, you know, what's the, what, you know, work is, work, work is killing me. It literally is killing you. Uh, we ultimately need to treat work with the thought pattern that really there's nothing that work should be able to do to your person that they do, that you do not allow them to do. They are not going to come to your house and kick your dog. Um, that's morbid. It's terrible. I 100% agree with all of that. It's just the case of there are limits to the work, to what work can do to damage you personally. And a lot of it is what you ultimately do to yourself through expectations or other things at work. So let's talk about what stress actually does in that it's killing you. What does it do to your body? Well, first it can give you sleep problems. Has anybody else just struggled with staying awake till 2 a.m. Trying to, trying to get something in for an arbitrary deadline that doesn't even really matter because nobody's depending on it the next day? There might just be like, this is the end of the sprint. I really, really need to get this done when in fact, having an extra four, four hours isn't going to affect the timelines on anything else. Yeah, it's not worth it. Sleep problems, you need to sleep in order to think. Muscle fatigue. Wow, this is sounding really, really awesome. Is stress actually making you run a marathon? <laughs> it can, because literally it causes a fight or flight uh, system response that can cause your muscles to twitch or uh, other kind of physiological things that will cause additional muscle fatigue. Headaches? Wow, you are super productive here, all stressed out. And ultimately can lead to a lack of sex drive, which means that it's also impacting other people in your life, not just you. Um, and you know, one part of that could be just relationships, but how it's affecting your body can also affect your relationships and, and how you connect with other people. So with regard to your mind, this, this was just the bodily stuff. It causes anxiety, anxiety leading to more sleep problems. It's, it's very cyclical. It can feed itself. A lack of focus. You have so many things going through your head and the stress of getting it done that you really can't even get it done. Anger, anger at yourself for not being able to focus, for having anxiety, for being stressed out. Again, just continues to cycle and build, especially if you let it. And ultimately this cyclical buildup happens to such a point that it can actually cause real depression. And this ends up becoming uh, a relatively common thing uh, in the last 20, 30 years that we don't really need to let control us. So in order to combat some of this, I need you to invest in yourself. I need you to invest in quality tools of your trade. 
Sierra, Sienna and I were talking a little bit earlier about her keyboard situation. You know, if you had a really nice, uh, a really nice keyboard monitor, anything that's going to make you feel more comfortable and more productive and more in your state, um, that's you're not going to be trying to smash this key every time you try to use it. Just invest in quality tools for your trade, and this can even be things of software like Calendly to better manage your calendars for your personal and other things. Invest in quality tools that help you be more productive and better scheduled and organized. Invest in hobbies or just doing nothing. Have little guilt about just taking a breather. Meditation, whatever it is that gives you a moment to just not be thinking about whatever it is that you're currently doing and the ability to kind of turn off to a certain degree. Relationships. This is one of the biggest ones. Um, a lot of folks have had to kind of refigure out what relationship means outside of work. Uh, a lot of people only had friends, quote, friends at work rather than other relationships in their lives. And the way that kind of everything went out over the last year and a half is relationships are really important and they were extra hard to maintain while separated. But I can tell you what, I know so many people that if they did not have those personal relationships with others would have collapsed far more times than they did or you know, had a, a much deeper collapse because they just didn't have support. And finally, I want you to take time to learn soft skills. Uh, there's, I, I have another kind of thing about soft skills and some hard truth on some of that, but soft skills are the thing that is going to differentiate you in your progress, uh, in your technical career, or otherwise, or technically adjacent career, your ability to work with others, your ability to organize others, and just to keep learning in that area. It's something that no one ever truly masters, but it's one of those things that uh, a lot of employers have actually identified as being a key area that they are missing candidates who have those skills. Oh, I feel like this so many times. Just, just keep going, smile, 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 help. <laughs> Everyone needs help. So how do you go around getting some help? You wanna find some mentors who work in your field because they can give you insight into, you know, just other areas and things to watch for. They don't necessarily need to be someone who is senior to you in terms of leveling, but maybe just somebody who has a different background to yourself. Mentors don't necessarily have to be more experienced than you either. It could just be somebody who has a different perspective or a different outlook. I want you to also find mentors who align with your goals. And to a certain degree, they're either there personally in their personal goals, or they're there already in where you want to be or where you're going to be or where you're trying to be next in your moving up in your career. And they don't have to be big, long discussions. This can just be, you know, having 15 minutes with somebody uh, every month or every couple of months, um, just in kind of touching base. What These are some things I'm doing. What else should I maybe be doing? And be sure to understand that this is a two-way street. Um, you need to be kind of supplying something for them that they may not actually realize uh, initially that they might need, which could just be somebody who's got boots in the ground uh, working in your particular area who can kind of give them the real tea as to what's, what's actually going on. What are people looking at? And when I talk about mentors that align with your personal life, like I highlighted earlier, uh, I'll throw one out there. I couldn't find many mentors or many people in my life who kind of were going through the elevated technical track 
but who were also mothers and kind of all the stuff that went with it. Uh, a lot of people told me, don't have kids. It'll destroy your career. It'll destroy your career. Your trajectory will be over. Uh, and I ardently refused to believe that. And I am finding that, yes, it is still possible to do that. It just requires that you uh, make some other adjustments and sacrifices in other areas. But it is aligning with my personal goals. And I was able to find a couple of people who were really able to mentor me and what those uh, tools were to help me actually get through them. This last one, you may not want to hear, but I want you to spend a little bit of money on either a career coach or going to some career seminars that will actually help you um, really align to where you are in your goals. Paid career coaches and seminars, they have no skin in the game other than to help you because you've already paid for them. And they want to keep on making money, so they want to do a good job. So find someone either directly or in a group setting. And, you know, this can be pretty inexpensive from a few hundred dollars to, to, to running about a couple hundred bucks an hour. So it's, uh, to, to, well, even more than that, if you're looking at uh, C-suite, but don't be afraid to spend a little bit of money now to just get an idea of where you are or to even investigate in like some group settings, what are some things you want to understand from a coaching perspective? I also want you to think about this one, to pay people for the services you don't want to do. Now, this was a little bit different in the pandemic times because, uh, you know, and still is for a number of areas because you don't want people to uh, necessarily come into your home. But, you know, cleaning is definitely one of those things that takes up a lot of time. Uh, you can either pay people or you can buy uh, robot vacuums and other things like that. Uh, I will tell you that having clean floors really does uh, make you less stressed out about things. Um, and yes, that is just Mr. Clean going at it. Uh, but to a certain degree, also with home repairs and specialists, um, as well as investing in other things that make you happy, really consider whether or not you want to spend the time building it or whether or not you are just kind of interested in the end result. And lastly, grocery shopping. Um, I haven't done my own like shopping for grocery basics in a very long time. Um, I spend a lot of time at specialty grocery stores and things like that, but there's something nice about being able to just order a number of items um, and you know have them be delivered, pay people, tip people appropriately because they are taking care of you, especially right now. Um, but, you know, you have to weigh whether or not it's actually worth your time to go spend two, three hours at the grocery store every couple of weeks. And lastly, everyone needs therapy. <laughs> I don't know how I need to actually say that, but everyone needs therapy. I even talk to somebody every month um, remotely and, you know, I have no other, you know, kind of mental health issues in the past or anything else like that. So what I'm, what I'm saying is that everyone should go get therapy because there are just things that you need to get out of your head and not to rag on all of your friends all the time or your partners and to really just have that kind of, uh, perspective from someone else. All right, so now we, we've kind of taken care of ourselves. So how do we actually then get known for what we're already doing? If no one knows how good you are, you aren't that good. Perception is reality, unfortunately enough. So we need to build a little bit of a personal brand so that we can then capitalize it capitalize on it more appropriately. 
So get now. Personal branding is all about your unique promise of value and what you bring to the table. It's also about getting your potential clients to choose you as the only solution to their problem. How do you actually sell yourself as the only person who can actually solve their problem? And right now, honestly, wages are at a super premium. So how do you then build your brand effectively enough so that they have extreme confidence before you really even walk through the door, so to speak? You need to build that personal brand. And let's start with how you actually define that brand. I don't know a better way to put this, but you need to introspect on your perspective. What does that actually mean? That means you need to take a little bit of inventory on yourself and say, what is unique about how I see the world? What are some unique things that only I experience? What are some things that other people might be interested in that isn't necessarily just retweeting somebody else's content all the time? You need to be able to put a little bit of your personal flavor but first you have to figure out what is that personal flavor. I also want you to define your value beyond technical. You are not just a person who works in tech. You are a person first. So try to figure out what are some of the things that you value from that perspective and help you actually define yourself as a whole person beyond just your technical capabilities. Because that's what people are gonna be more interested in most of the time anyway. Unless you're one of these like super coder people who only spend time uh, working in open source and have no other hobbies. Uh, but there's really very few of those kinds of people. I want you to be an authentic person but I also want you to put your kind of best presentation on. So while normally I'm kind of wearing a t-shirt um, and you know, all of that kind of stuff, uh, I, put a, I put a little bit of effort in today, right? So I got some mascara on, a little bit of lip gloss, you know, nothing, nothing crazy. I don't look like I, you know, really got dolled up for this, but I am still my authentic self. I'm just putting a little bit nicer presentation on it. So I want you to think about that every time you kind of think about what you're going to put out there into the world. And when I said introspect on your perspective, what is unique to you? You need to highlight what those things are and what makes you unique. I am a woman in tech who's a mom and I do a lot of work in community and I, but I'm very technical. And so that combined with, I also have a, an appreciation for art and I build a lot of things. These are, these are things that are maybe not as common in the tech space. So how do I then highlight some of those things and also elevate others, which is again, part of my brand. All right, let's talk about social media. Where do you need to be and why? You need to have a public presence and that public presence should be pretty consistent. Um, I'm gonna say Twitter, GitHub and LinkedIn. You don't need to have a professional presence on Instagram for the most part, although it is a little bit helpful if you are a designer. Um, Twitter, kind of tech Twitter is, is its own thing, but definitely having a voice there, uh, having an account there that's at least somewhat consistent matters. And then to also put that kind of consistent branding on your GitHub and your LinkedIn, yes, have a GitHub. Yes, have a decently complete LinkedIn. Whatever resources you can put on there, put them on there. Because the more filled out you are, the more they kind of feel like they know you before they even reach out. I want you to keep on brand. When we talked about that perspective piece and that, that authenticity, all of those fall into what we would consider our brand. So I want you to keep your content on brand. What does this mean? 
no shit posting and and politics like just uh i'm not normally somebody who would curse but that's uh that's kind of the reality of things um unless you're if you're unless your brand is you know you, you are somebody who is a political commentator um you know unless uh you're making like just don't put a lot of personal judgment on others um really think about what would be a pro inappropriate thing to say at work and what would be like super inappropriate thing to say at work and that'll give you an idea of where to kind of place your brand somewhere in being able to share your authentic self but to <laughs> maybe not share everything about yourself i don't need to know when you're on the toilet all of those kinds of things and to keep content relatively consistent which means do not spam people. If you really have a reason to throw down 20 tweets a day on average, I really question what else you have going on and how you're actually able to keep that up unless you are somebody who's working in tech journalism or something along those lines. You just do not want to spam people with every piece of random content that you found funny or that, you know, you're, you're kind of working through or every thought that comes through your brain, just really think about what are some things that you actually have a thought on and are able to present concisely and within your brand space and support, right? So do retweet things, but maybe not just straight retweet, right? Like maybe comment it on a, a little bit. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. This is a big one. Think about the fact that we have international audiences and some of the cultures that people might come through. Uh, there's an example of this <laughs> that I have that's rather embarrassing, but uh, I was in Germany uh, at a like kind of a hangout spot slash beer bar thing, um, but it wasn't really like that. It was kind of this other deal, but I was there with a bunch of developers from all over pretty much the world. Um, there were some folks from like uh, parts of Africa, there were folks from, from India, parts of Europe, the US. Um, the only thing I think we were missing was uh, folks uh, who currently live in South America, although there was like a couple of people from Central America. Um, and we were having a random discussion and then somebody said, do you have magnums in the US? And the looks on everybody's faces were everything from smiles to kind of smirks to, you know, faces down. Cause that can mean a lot of different things in a lot of different cultures. And it was one of those things that, you know, just kind of got spouted out, but the reactions were all over the place to what seems like a relatively innocent question, but could be totally loaded based off of the culture that you're asking it from. All right, so when we talk about social media, what do I want you to do? I want you to either get a logo or an icon. This can be literally some sort of animated thing. This could be a small picture of you that's maybe a little bit optimized um, that you can actually put on a number of items uh, as an example. So this was like my original one from, uh, I wanna say around 2010. Uh, this has been a while, um, actually before the like Androidify app and things like that, although uh, it's very, very similar because I copied it off of like the Mobile World Congress stuff uh, that it came out earlier that year. Uh, but this is kind of what mine kind of looks like now, um, just a little bit more simplified um, with some uh, slight changes and things like that. But I want you to get something that you can kind of like iconify that you can share with other people that you can put in small format. Um, that's gonna be a little bit more identifiable as you. It could just be, again, um, a cartoonified version of your face that doesn't look super generic, um, could be tied to whatever kind of personal brand you, you want it to be. Um, this has just been mine for a, lot of time, a long time. So I'll either use just the head part or the whole one or whatever it is. 
um, in a number of places. And kind of as proof, this is like an HTC device from like 2010, 2011. <laughs> and yeah, you can see I, uh, I've been using this for quite a while. I, and kind of as another point to this, like you are an adult. So take a real headshot. I am so sick of seeing like things in LinkedIn and a number of other areas where people just do not have something that is somewhat professional. Um, where there's like just way too many things going on in the background, or it's literally a cropped off photo with some like friend or family member or something along those lines. Everyone can find a place where there's going to be some kind of relatively, you know, static, not too difficult background uh, and bring in some decent light. You all have phones. You can get selfies. If you want to have a friend do it, do it but I want you to take some time to take a real headshot because that level of professionalism, you immediately have photos to put onto whatever the company website is or to put onto uh, like your Agile site and your Slack site and all these other things so that you have a nice identifiable photo of yourself. Uh, I did this a number of years ago and I'm still using the same headshots. Uh, it still looks like me, so I'm going to keep with it. <laughs> but take a decent headshot. It's nice. It's very usable. I want you to think about some touch points. What is a touch point? A touch point is really how do you reach out and kind of touch somebody without actually touching them? How do you create a connection with strangers? And really looking back at what is unique about you and maybe some of your iconography or some other skill sets that you have. This can be just how you reach out to people in uh, various social media channels. This can be how you actually approach people um, when you're actually at something physically in person uh, or even digitally. What are, do you have like a unique saying? Do you have uh, like kind of a personal brand uh, slogan? whatever that might be. Now, for me, my touch points to a lot of folks actually tie to, uh, you know, kind of my crafty side. Um, so working with people, I create uh, all kinds of 3D stuff, um, custom shoes, pins, stickers. Uh, if you meet me in person, I am always like giving away some sort of swag thing. Uh, I actually, if you look up on Thingiverse, I made the women who code keycaps that are on Thingiverse. Um, if you want to reach out to me, I can send one to you too. Um, so if you uh, have a mechanical keyboard, I can send you an awesome women who code keycap and I can bring one of those out in just a second, the end. But I use these as an immediate way to kind of say hello to people and to be an icebreaker. Nobody ever gets bad when you just randomly approach them and you give them a gift, <laughs> um, especially something that isn't necessarily immediately branded, but uh, can actually create touch points for other people. So there's a couple of conferences where I make uh, kind of huge amounts of swag and I will actually get friends who are going to be at the conference to pass those things out for me. Um, and then it ends up be, being a thing where uh, other people start connecting with people around what it is. And I don't usually put any kind of name or anything else on it because my goal is to kind of create relationships where people immediately have something they could talk about. Oh, I love those earrings or, oh, where'd you get that pin? Or like, I think one of my favorite ones was a coworker at an old job said that she went to WWDC and she actually met someone because they were hanging out in the open space. They had their laptop open and she had one of my stickers on her laptop. And so that immediately gave her a conversation to point to kind of meet this other person and say, oh, how do you know Stacy? Or how'd you get this sticker? Oh, I have one too. Um, and then they created a whole connection based off of that. So it's really about what do you do to kind of propagate your kind of brand 
but also how do you create a sense of community that doesn't even necessarily revolve around you, but maybe revolves about what you consider your brand? Publish everything. Publish your thoughts, publish your code. Just start writing things down, start sharing. Because when you start sharing, it's amazing what you can tap into. I want you to GitHub all your crap, even your mistakes. Even if something doesn't work out, I can tell you that when I actually look at someone uh, as a candidate, I try to find them on GitHub. I try to see if they're at least experimenting with things. Do they actually kind of care about what they do? Uh, in a way that says, you know what, I, I even copied this project and made a couple of changes. Or, yeah, you know, uh, they said that they're a full stack developer. I see like three different projects in three different, uh, three different languages. So that to me, you know, immediately says, adds a little bit of like a credibility tick, um, especially if they have done something that has like some stars on it. They're, they've got some watchers, things like that. Um, but even the willingness to be open to say like, I'm just experimenting with this thing, it hasn't really turned out, but, uh, I still have it up publicly. If you are somebody who doesn't have this, you don't have example code, I will ask for it. Uh, and, or we're going to give you a coding, uh, take home coding exam. And that's probably not what you always want. So if you actually throw example code out there, you'll find that it comes back to you like tenfold. Uh, I can tell you in a lot of cases um, and basically almost every one of my jobs in a very long time, I have not had to do a uh, kind of coding exam. There might be a technical uh, whiteboard session, but that's it. There's no kind of like code exam piece because they can see my other work and actually use that to kind of go, okay, well, they know this, they don't know that or whatever it might be and like dig in on what it is. If you don't have any of that, you are going to be asked to do so many different take home exams, so many more things than you actually probably want to do. And you're going to have to repeat it for every single time that you want to move to something new or move to a new place or a new job or whatever that might be. And where do you actually start? Understand that your problems are everyone's problems. If you are having a problem with it, whatever you're working on, guess what? Somebody else is too. So that's a great place to start. And there just is always a need for beginner level content in just how to set things up, how to do other areas. So if you're wondering like, I don't really know that much, what could I share? Share your journey. Share what you found confusing. Make it relatable to some other piece of code that you've done before. Because your problems are everyone's problems. And at the end of the day, what we really just want to see when people are looking at uh, candidates to transfer in even is evidence that you care about what you do. You know, there's, there's a lot of people who just, they're, they're just like, oh, and I just, I'm just here for a job. Then there's a huge difference between the people who are here to kind of build, build themselves, build others, build anything. If you're just coming here to work on your floor and move out, that's a lot different than saying, you know what, I'm gonna buy this building, I'm gonna renovate it, I'm, and I'm gonna turn it around, and I'm gonna move on to the next one. And we just wanna see that kind of evidence. You are only as strong as your network. So be a part of the community. You need to get out there. Go to a conference or a few little winky face, you're kind of already making a, a, a little bit of an effort by just being here right now. Join your local GDG, your women uh, who code meetup, start looking at events. There are just so many things that you can do 
to get out there. And uh, even if you don't necessarily show up in person right now, everything's still being broadcast digital. So the kind of excuse that I can't really make it um, is a little bit harder to use sometimes. Uh, even though we have a little bit of Zoom burnout, it may not be the worst thing in the world, especially because uh, a lot of folks are not sticking to just strictly content, but also just connection. I want you to consider contributing to open source or Stack Overflow. Um, I still consider Stack Overflow a little bit of a, like it's its own kind of open source. Um, and it's definitely got some good sides and downsides to its community. But uh, that can be said also for a lot of open source projects. But just be willing to kind of say, hey, I have some interest in this. Um, if you find a bug, fix a bug. Uh, throw some you know, help out there on Stack Overflow. A little bit of decent reputation can also just help you in building your, your skills. You can find more areas that you enjoy. Um, and you know, it's, it's kind of cool when somebody shows me like their stack overflow and I see they've got like a three or 500 on reputation, which isn't like a crazy number by any means, but it does mean that they've taken a little bit of time to share a bit of themselves and their expertise. Join a technical Slack or a Discord. There's a few of them. Uh, a lot of uh, women who code chapters actually have their own their own slacks. I know that ours here in DFW, uh, Dallas, Fort, Dallas Fort Worth is very active and we have a wonderful set of discussion and it has been so nice to just meet people through there, even if they aren't necessarily uh, part of like the specific group that's just in like my North Dallas area. Cause we also have like Fort Worth and, and, so, and downtown, which, you know, I don't necessarily interact with as much. Uh, and there's also discords for a number of different technical tracks, not just uh, not just one specifically. There's also the women in tech Slack, um, which is a great way to connect with women and just see what's going on or maybe get some feedback. All right, the final section. I know we're kind of we're running a little bit, but I promise you this is actually worth it. Wink, wink. Uh, double entendre. <laughs> that cash money. How do we get paid that cash money, y'all? I talked about it earlier. We're going to talk about how to actually do it now. <laughs> the truth is you got to spend money to make money. I hate hearing it too. I think we're all kind of done with hearing it, but unfortunately enough, it's still true. You need to get better at your job by knowing what you actually bring to the table. How do I actually get paid is by actually knowing what I'm good at and what I actually bring that they need. So I said introspection on your perspective earlier. Well, now you need to say introspection on yourself with regards to what you bring to the table. So DISC uh, is a kind of like, what is your leadership type? What is your personality type? And how to work with others? Uh, I identify as straight down the middle DI, which means that I can have a tough time sometimes with creating space for other people. And I may not always be as conscientious of, quite honestly, it's sometimes steamrolling. So it's something that I found really helpful because I keep little post-it notes around to just tell me to recognize people, to reach out to others, to create space. It's very helpful in actually people getting to know who the real you is rather than just the real, the, the person that you present. Again, an executive slash career coach. You need to have somewhere consistent assessment of your skills and your situation. What do you need to progress? What do you need to grow in your current position? What, what are some areas of that you can reflect on and grow on? It's very helpful to have someone that you can speak honestly, who really knows 
what workplaces are looking for and what are some maybe things that you're just not paying attention to that you should. Negotiation. So, all right, we've kind of identified some things about ourselves, personality types, leadership style. We've, we've kind of gotten some coaching. What does that mean in terms of negotiation? This is the biggest one. I see this so often where people go, I'm not worth that much. Oh, I should just be happy to get this. Well, as Carol says here, don't bargain yourself down before you get to the table. Don't discount yourself. Understand that you bring something unique and that's why they want you. So don't bargain yourself down. It is a lot of money and time and investment to even get you to the point where you are negotiating, that you do have an offer. So don't be afraid to ask for things. Don't bargain yourself down. Don't sell yourself short. All these things that we've heard before, but it's really hard to say I'm worth it and to be willing to stand by it. That's what another thing that coaches can definitely help you with. I had a negotiation coach for a previous job and it made such a huge difference. I am not even joking, like more 35% more than their initial offer. 35% over a third more. Come on y'all. Like for a cent for doing the same work, I'm, I would be getting paid 35, I mean, like, that's crazy, right? So don't bargain yourself down before you get to the table. But how do I even get there? A negotiator should observe everything. You must be part Sherlock Holmes, part Sigmund Freud. So you need to understand why do they need you? Maybe why do they need you right now where you can't take, you know, a significant break between one job to the next? or even uh, renegotiating your existing contract with either a promotion or just the reality that developer paychecks have gone up. So it might even just be prudent to do that at your you know, next quarterly or uh, yearly. You need to know what your value is and you need to understand why they value you and why they need you. You need to put those two things together to actually say, this is what I'm worth and this is what I should get. And I'm standing by it. And if you choose not to uh, actually participate in this, then I'm out, I'm done. The art of negotiation. You need to find your market value, why you are a premium and why you are needed. What does that actually mean? You need to actually spend the time to figure those things out. There are a number of good resources, but I'm telling you that people on Glassdoor are typically not putting in their salaries because they feel like they're being paid fairly and they're not looking at all. Those actually tend to be uh, significantly lower because a lot of people who actually put in their salaries are because they feel like they're being underpaid. So if you then find like, oh, well, I guess I'm similar to market rate, you're probably not. There's a number of other resources that'll tell you the truth of what companies are actually paying for people. And then start to figure out why you're a premium, why you're needed, why, why you? Why, why should they pee you more? Again, talk a little bit about a negotiation program or a coach because you need consistent assessment of your skills and your situation. And they might even have a better trick up their sleeve for finding that market value and why you're a premium, why you're needed. And the last question I have for you, stay or leave? So now you kind of understand what, I, what you need to do to kind of orchestrate a number of things in your life personally to get 
kind of where you need to be happiness wise and self-satisfaction wise, then how to build that personal brand. And then ultimately how to capitalize on it. And you might even find along the way that what you're doing now doesn't align with what your personal brand is or that you have so much more value elsewhere. What's keeping you there? How do you, how do you get to that next step? Are they there to support you? Can they support you? Can you reach out and find those kind of career growth goals where you are? And with that, I'd like to give you a number of more resources on just uh, various books and uh, things to actually tap into so that you can really kind of help yourself uh, with a lot of these kind of like career coach and career assessments, um, as well as I really highly recommend uh, the developer playbook uh, by Lauren Hassan. That uh, is literally like a, an entire storyline of how to do the things that I've just outlined in addition to a, a number of other like just kind of amazing things. Uh, she, she is definitely inspirational. And if you have a chance to see her in person, please do. Um, and then also Plan, Act and Impact uh, by Colt McAnless. Um, this is a great book recently published, very digestible. You can totally go through either of these in a weekend if you want to. And a number of things along with uh, mental health services and getting a career coach and what it can actually mean. And with that, this is my information. Uh, if you need, need to get in contact with me or want to, it's available here. Wow, thank you so much. That was a roller coaster of emotions. I felt called out, literally. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelmed I mean, by everything you told me I need to do, but also very inspired. So. <laughs> Well, you know, you, once you've kind of been through it and lived through it in a lot of cases, it's, it's really hard to watch someone else struggle. And if anything, the best thing I can do is give you whatever resources you need to go out and find that journey for yourself. Uh, I find that a lot of times people don't really kind of talk about, they go in depth into one subject and you're just like going, okay, well, I got there. Where do I go next? Um, yeah. So it's, it's definitely difficult. This is a continuous process. Uh, I still struggle with judging myself. I still struggle with all the kind of things that a lot of us do uh, on imposter syndrome. Every time somebody just listens to what I have to say and doesn't like contradict me, I'm just like going <laughs> like, <laughs> like, are you sure? Are you sure what's going on here? <laughs> Um, I want to be really respectful of your time because we are at about six o'clock and that's the hour, the hour I asked for, <laughs> but if you have times, I, I'm happy to open the floor to any questions. Yeah, absolutely. Anyone has, if anyone wants to post it, there are lots of ways to ask chat, Q and a raise your hand. Um, question from Christabel. Um, could Stacey show the slide with the help resources from earlier in your talk? Uh, which ones? These ones? or the one way in the beginning. So the, the best thing I can tell you right now is if you actually go to this link right here, this gives you the full slides. So uh, bit.ly link will actually give you the entire slide deck. Perfect. Um, Lisa asked a question a little bit earlier. Where do you find a negotiating coach or even a career coach? Do you have any advice on that? So this is actually pretty interesting. Uh, what I do is I kind of use other networks to find people. And uh, I'm actually kind of struggling with a certain thing around that right now because it is uh, me and another person like two people, we're really struggling right now to find a high level technical career coach because um, they kind of don't exist. And uh, there's a number of uh, career coaches structured around like getting to that VP level, managerial track 
Um, there's just really not that many uh, that kind of deal in like uh, high level technical career coaching, but you can actually just start by LinkedIn, see who, oh, who knows other people that you know, and especially if they're connected, oh, how did you meet this person? Oh, what is their area of specialization? Or you know what, have you really met, a, do you have a current coach? If, you've, if you actually talk to a number of people who are sitting at like kind of the senior director or VP level, you'll find that a number of them already have uh, career coaches. And especially ones that have kind of been on a little bit of a meteoric rise. What made them so successful? It's not just them. It's about surrounding yourself with people who can help you get there. Because guess what? You know, one of the things they say is like, it's very hard to recognize mental illness when, the, when you're the one who's mentally ill. Um, sometimes bringing in other people to kind of go, do you realize that you're doing this when you speak to me? Or that you constantly look at people's chins instead of their eyes. Or just little things that imperceptibly in a lot of cases, uh, can make your experience not that good, or you have a weird tick, or you know, just other self-calming mechanisms. I frequently keep uh, a number of little fidget toys and quiet ones so that I can take my hand and like kind of roll down here, right? Um, or even to remember things. I put things on fingers and I'll kind of just like hmm, tap my finger like this and put it to my side for like points I wanna bring up later uh, or just any of those kinds of uh, little things that kind of help you in being able to um, speak out more, uh, more with yourself. Um, but yeah, oh, okay. So apparently it's requesting for access. I will open that up uh, really quickly in just a moment. Um, so actually if I, escape this let's do sharing where's my share oh yeah anyone anyone done okay there you go it's open <laughs> um and then a question that popped up um when starting to publish more or share more externally how do you deal with thoughts such as this is too basics others have already written about this and then eventually getting discouraged to the point where you just don't even attempt to share it. You know what? Um, guess what? Everyone starts at the bottom. And all I heard in that entire sentence was you putting yourself down <laughs> and judging yourself by other people. Because guess what? Not everybody knows this person that you saw on the internet. Okay? Like... It's, it's fine. If you're sharing things about your own personal journey, especially to your own community, that's invaluable in and of itself. You've just saved other people legwork. You've just gained yourself a whole new area of expertise and, and uh, experience. Like, don't worry about it. If you constantly worry about what everybody else is doing, you're going to be like, oh, why would I bother contributing to open source? Cause it's already so great. And it's like, well, did you find something annoying? Did you find a bug? Did you, you know, did you find that you had a hard time understanding things? One of the easiest ways to get it started in a lot of these areas publicly is through documentation. Cause <laughs> like documentation sucks everywhere. It sucks. Uh, like, <laughs> I have a very good friend who is leading documentation on a very like big pu public project and uh, getting paid to do so. And like so many of these projects, even from big old companies have garbage documentation. Um, so even if you just are somebody who's going through it and learning it and just going like, wow, I found this really confusing, even though somebody else posted about it, is it in the docs? If it's not in the docs, maybe you should just be the person who writes it and puts a PR that says like, it's in the docs now. Um, so that's, that's another area to roll in. Like there's, and 
if you're also looking for like, how do I even get more experience and things like that, you might even just be able to jump on like some quote Fiverr jobs. Um, there's a lot of people who just need like a WordPress site put together. And then by doing so, you've instantly added a site to your portfolio, especially as a web developer or a CSS uh, developer or any of those kinds of like specific things. So there's, there's always opportunities uh, to build out and it doesn't have to be for free either. Uh, you can make money while learning. Just to let you know, everybody's looking for technical talent right now. So if you can build a little portfolio, make a little money on the side and then start like rolling up into some other areas, it, you will find that it is, um, it might take time, but you know, you, you don't have to constantly throw money down in order to be learning. You can make some money and learn. I just recently learned WordPress and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Not my favorite. Um, what is the best advice for someone who is struggling to get hired? I have two years of experience and recently I went to school to enhance my skill set. Can you repeat the kind of beginning of that question again? Uh, what is your best advice for someone who is struggling to get hired? Struggling to get hired? I'd take a good long look at your resume. Um, there are so many garbage resumes. And what I would say is always put together a resume that entices more questions rather than answers them for people. Don't try to overload it with a bunch of information. Put in a lot of keywords that they were actually looking for. Personalize it to the job. Don't just send out a generic resume every time. And put a link to your GitHub. Put a link to your profile page. Put a link to all these other things. And guess what? If you want to, you can put like bit.ly links and any of these link customizers and then you can see, did somebody click on it? Did somebody use that to get to other content? So, and you can also say like with your LinkedIn profile, you can see who's looking. So you can understand uh, kind of where things might be coming from. If you're struggling to get hired, it's usually a case of putting some of that time and effort into your brand and your presentation um, it's not usually that you lack the skill sets um, to get that first first job, because we're, what what I hire for, what a lot of my friends hire for, is not how good you actually are already at the job. We are hiring for people who are brilliant, creative, problem solvers. If you are somebody who has shown functional capability in those areas. That's what we want. We know that like our code base is gonna look totally different from anything else that you've worked on before. And that's true at every job. It doesn't even matter what kind of code it is. I don't care if you're a React developer or if you're somebody who writes Golang, like it's all gonna be different when you get there. <laughs> so um, really we just wanna know that you have a good understanding of the basics and that you're curious, you're genuinely curious. Uh, and that you can kind of self-edit to a certain degree. This is not a question, but I do want to make sure that it gets shared. I've watched this presentation for quite a few times now, and every single time I leave more motivated than ever. I received two offers last week. I negotiated the one I wanted and got exactly what I wanted. I'll be relocating to Europe in two months. Thank you, Stacey, for Aww. all that you do. <laughs> That's amazing. That is really amazing. And you know what, like just, just every once in a while getting something like that, like it just, uh, I, I will cry later. I am trying, I am, I am nurturing, I am nurturing tears at the moment. <laughs> so if I do a little wipeage, just, just be aware. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, anything, and, and even to this, to this kind of presentation and the content therein. This is me sharing some of my own experiences, some of my own learnings, things that I've paid for <laughs> and telling you kind of what's worked and what's worth it. And you're gonna go through a lot of this and you're gonna even be able to expand upon it and share that with other people too. What, what did you find really tricky 
where did you kind of stumble? Like, you know, ex take, take this and build on it for somebody else, you know? Um, that's, that's really, I, I think, oh, okay, sorry. For clamped, for clamped a little. All right, let's uh, wrap up with one more question to keep cognizant of everyone's time, including yours, of course. Um, any advice on balancing working full-time and balancing pet projects, open source, blog, tech writing, online presence? Uh, guess what? I do all those things and I'm a mother to an 18 month old and I'm 29 weeks pregnant now. <laughs> and I do all the cooking in the house. And how do I balance this? It's by choosing what I'm going to put effort towards and really kind of getting good about organization. Um, I live by a calendar now. I try to at least organize my clothes into, I can just grab this and toss this on kind of thing. Um, I actually look at my calendar every day to decide how nice of clothes I'm going to put on. Uh, <laughs> so um, if, I, if I'm talking to someone important like y'all, you get, you get a fancy shirt, all right? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but how do I balance all of this? I don't do them all at once. I do them in little pieces. I decide, you know, like I spent two hours on Saturday uh, taking apart uh, switches for a keyboard and customizing them and then putting them bra brick into a keyboard. Um, <laughs> so if that, you know, says anything, it's just creating some sort of personal time for yourself. Um, and in blogging, there's all these things that like, you know, I have on my list of things I got to do and I know, but at the same point in time, I'm going to prioritize certain things that align with just what I value the most and what I'm going to be able to and capable to do and to be okay with that. I'm not going to get everything every time. Um, and you know, do I totally make batch cooks so that I can pull like some pre-cooked ingredients right out of the fridge or the freezer. And, you know, uh, I do a lot of like barbecue and smoking and stuff and like, I'll take, I'll do a whole brisket and then we'll cut that sucker up into eights and throw it in pieces into the, into the uh, freezer and then I can just pull that out and guess what, we got like dinner ready. You know what I mean? Um, just to like think about how do I do little optimizations? How do I create time for the stuff that I really wanna do? And being okay with maybe not being super outwardly productive to everyone all the time. You need to do a lot of things for yourself first. Next time I reach out, I'm going to ask for a cooking demonstration instead of a talk. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like I very talented in that that arena as well. <laughs> you know what? I just kind of delve deep into it, especially with just being home. I, I always cooked for myself for lunch. Uh, I've been a remote worker for over three years now. So um, well over three years now. And so for me, that's uh, just something that brings uh, a little bit of personal satisfaction and not eating, you know, quite as much garbage kind of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Healthy, healthy in, healthy out. I've lost some weight. So, you know, through not really trying, but like just eating a little better, I guess. <laughs> Well, with that, I just want to thank you again so much for being here, for sticking around to answer these questions, for giving us so much advice and so much sharing so many of your experiences. Um, it was, again, very emotional roller coaster all over, but <laughs> definitely that inspirational motivate it sits at the top of that, that pyramid. Um, well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you to everyone who joined us, and I hope to see all of you at another uh, upcoming event. And with that, just wrapping things up. <laughs>